Hey guys, this is Nicoletta Morales says, and check out my interview with Amsterdam Avenue. Thanks. So can you tell a little bit about the series and how it all came about? Yeah. For those that don't know what it is, but would like to check it out. For sure. Mm -hmm. Amsterdam Ave is about two girls. One is Dutch Vietnamese and lives in Amsterdam <laughs> with her fiance and has the dream of becoming an actress. The other is Indian American. She lives in New York and has the dream of becoming a DJ. So the two of them um, get really amazing opportunities. They swap places, they do a house swap, and they decide to pursue their dreams in, um, in their new cities as expats. Well, what I loved about the series is that it shows the immigrant side um, being especially female immigrant because I'm an immigrant as well from Eastern Europe and seeing it it's it's pretty awesome and refreshing so tell me what was what's the message I guess you're trying to send or the change you're trying to make with the series well definitely in this day and age with immigration being what it is I think it's really important to show all the different types of immigration there are and so people can understand and empathize with these stories and see that we actually all have a lot in common and there are a lot of very relatable elements for everyone. Um, both of these two characters, not only are they do they become expats, but they're also both from immigrant families. Um, on Kieran's side, that kind of takes shape in the mentality of her, um, her family and her friends who come from her Indian American background. Um, and it makes it a lot harder for her to pursue her dream because, you know, the immigrant mentality is you, you work really hard on your education and education in the U.S. is extremely expensive. You're racking up a lot of either student loans or debt or, you know, or your parents are paying a lot of money for your school. So to take a risk like that and, you know, decide to pursue your passion um, is something that's even harder to do, I think, uh, as a person with an immigrant background. And then Maya. And for Maya, she, well, she's from the Netherlands and there is a mentality there of just behave normally and fit in and just, you know, don't do anything crazy. And we wanted to show that it's okay to do something a little crazy and out of the ordinary sometimes. And for Maya, she's also certain me, so she's mixed and she's gonna, you know, come to the US and figure out what that means, where she fits in, what where does she belong. And these were stories that we thought were fun and also important to tell with the specificity of our lives um, because, you know, there are so many more other people who hopefully can relate to them. Yeah, I think, um, you know, well, we live in New York and what we see is a lot, a lot, a lot of our friends are international. Um, but when you watch TV, you see the American perspective. Um, mostly and so I think a lot of people can relate to that feeling of being a foreigner in the US in New York and anywhere basically in the US um, and that experience of you know doing something so scary and picking up and going to a place where you're not at home um, I think is something a lot of people will relate to in some way I think what's awesome is that you guys are self-funded and you're female filmmakers um, trying to make a difference and I think in today's day and age, especially the Me Too movement, this is very hard. I mean, it's not easy, even when you're funded. Mm -hmm. So how are you guys making it? And why are you making it? I, I mean, obviously, um, something happened um, to inspire you to do that. But you can feel free to share as much as you want or as little as you want. But um, I guess your story could hopefully make a change with, for other female filmmakers or actresses that are going through difficult times with with the male mm -hmm. counterparts for sure yeah. i think well the most important experience for me was that i was living in la as an actress going on auditions and also being a foreigner um, not being able to get the best auditions and in my experience i had one particular scary experience where i went to an audition and it was unsafe and that was really traumatizing for me and it scared me and wanted, wanted, I wanted to go home after that. Um, so I, I took some time to, to think about that. And then it, what I did was instead was I wrote a short film and I, I got a female crew together from, from US, UCLA at the time. And it was just the best experience. And it was great energy on set. Um, everyone loved being there and I was like this is such a relief and this is what I want to do and so that's why I chose to 
turn this bad experience into a positive experience by starting Fountain Avenue Productions with the mission of empowering female filmmakers across the world. And the other experience we've had in particular um, with, yeah, if we talk about self-funding is that we at some point had an investor um, who basically took away all our creative control and tried to make the show into something completely different that we could not stand behind. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to make the hard decision that we were going to do this on our own. And that's also scary. And something really interesting about the investor is that this was somebody who had some clout, um, mm -hmm. somebody that we thought if we told people we had this investor, we, it might open more doors for us. Um, so to walk away from that was definitely a bit scary because even to our own parents, we had to show them that we were achieving something that we could keep going on like this and that we were, you know, being on a path to success. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the thing is you can't compromise your, your artistic integrity mm -hmm. because as soon as one thing changes and another thing changes, the next thing you know, he literally said the story doesn't really matter. Yeah. And as soon mm -hmm. as he said that, we were like, well, but the story is the most important thing. Yeah. Um, that's what people will relate to. That's what makes it different from other shows. So as soon as those types of things start happening, then you kind of know this person may not have respect for your talents, may mm -hmm. not actually see in you what you thought they might have. Yeah. Um, so for us, we thought, let alone the part where we want to have our own artistic integrity and do things ourselves, this won't be good if we work with him either. Mm -hmm. And actually our chances of succeeding will be lower because even if he does have connections, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be genuine. It's not yeah. going to be high quality. So it really doesn't make a difference um, having a person's name like that if um, the show is not going to be good and if you have to compromise too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what we've seen really is that you can't rely on, on people like this. There's no. just no, no way. Um, so even if that person can give you cloud, can give you money, um, you can't trust it. And so we had to go with our gut. We had to take a leap of faith and be like, we're going to figure this out together and take, take back the control. Yeah. Well, you guys are definitely an inspiration to females and not mm -hmm. just females, but I'm sure males out there because you're doing it and you're doing it from scratch and you're trying really, really hard. Um, but can you tell me how difficult was it to create your own production company um, from scratch and actually make it work? Because as we know, sometimes it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what, what did it take for, for you to do that and build it? Support of family and friends, I'm sure. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, support from family and friends, I would say. Um, finding someone you work really well with, um, that you have someone to do all this stuff with. Um, and just keep going, you know, it's, it's tough, um, but you just gotta, gotta keep, keep going and good things will happen. And the thing is results speak louder than anything else. And for us, we were like, okay, during the period of time when we're going to be writing, when we're going to be producing, doing things that are behind the scenes that people won't be able to see yet, if it's good or not, we were honestly pretty isolated. Yeah. We, we tried not to be in touch with tons of people because we didn't want the commentary of what are you doing or is this going to be good because those are questions that we just can't prove with results until you've done it so now that we made the show and we're able to show it at screenings and eventually it will be online um that speaks louder than anything and then slowly we got the confidence and the partnerships of other really strong amazing women like mm -hmm. coco and breezy our music directors um and katherine Curtin, who's in our show who's been on insecure or just the new Black, Stranger Things, and a lot of other shows. So those are results, you know, when people decide they want to work with you because they think the script is really good, even if you have no budget, um, those are results that people will respond to. And those are the people that matter too, because there yeah. are a lot of people along the way that will just act like you're crazy and, you know, like, what is this thing you're doing? But the thing is, it doesn't matter what they say. In the end, what matters is obviously the audience, but in the, in the meantime, while making it, it's, yeah, like people who are genuine people who are supportive mm -hmm. um, and who will attach themselves to a project that they think is good. And you guys have a very interesting story of meeting one another. Can you share it? Yes. Yeah. We met about seven years ago in a, in a club in Centre Pay, actually. Yeah, we were just we were partying in a club. And mm -hmm. uh, Dion's brother was hitting on my friend and their little romance did not 
did not stand the test of time. I don't think they ever talked again. <laughs> but we sent each other Facebook friend requests after that, and we stayed in touch. We did, yeah. And, and then Dion was looking at acting schools in the U.S. I went to Carnegie Mellon, not for acting, for business, but they have a great acting program. So that's actually how we got in touch again. Yeah. Um, when Dion was looking at those schools, and um, fast forward a couple of years, Dion was in New York, an acting school. I was there working in fashion, and that's where we became closer and eventually ended up working together. Yeah, and actually even during the time that we were, that we barely knew each other, Pooja was already like really supportive. Um, it, there was a time when I was really in doubt about going to New York versus staying, and Pooja was actually the person I could talk to about that, about that choice. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what it, in this journey, because it has been a journey and it's just starting, what have you learned about yourselves as females, as creative uh, professionals that you would like to share with us? I've learned um, that we, our opinions and our voices uh, really do matter. That sounds cheesy, but the thing is in the beginning, you're really used to being very supportive as a woman. And if you're in a group of people and you don't agree with something, you're used to just saying, oh, okay, and oh, laughing it over, smoothing mm -hmm. things over for the sake of um, being socially you know, appropriate and making sure that nothing is awkward. And I think the thing that, that I've learned from this is I don't need to do that. If I don't agree, I can say it. If it's awkward after that, fine. Maybe more people should risk an awkward atmosphere to stand up for what they really think. And I think I learned a little bit of that from Dion too, because the Dutch culture is a little <laughs> bit more direct and versus in the US where we're always trying to be polite and um, not everybody, but at least the way that I grew up. So I think just being able to be in a group of people and if somebody says something racist or something sexist, just feeling like I can just say it, say what I think and you know, maybe challenging this person will make them rethink what they've said and, and their beliefs. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've learned to not minimize myself, um, to take up space. That's something that I've always found challenging. Um, and I think now in the positions we're in, we're seeing that we're, yeah, that it's okay to take up space, that we shouldn't minimize ourselves. And it's actually empowering to other people to take up their space. And it's a bit of a relief for people too. The second you start being real and you're like, wait a minute, I don't agree with this. Or, yeah. There are definitely people in the room that feel the same way and just might be too afraid to say it. So the second you start being more real, actually people respond even better, which is cool. And I would not have thought that before this yeah. journey. So what's awesome is that you guys role directed, produced, you're acting, you're basically everything in this series. And it's amazing. Um, to me. So having said that, how can we as an audience, female audience, male audience as well, support you and other female filmmakers who are trying to make it? What can we do? Um, well, the best way is to, to subscribe on our YouTube channel, Fountain Avenue Productions. That's where we'll be releasing the series. Mm -hmm. And to follow us on our social media channels, um, on Instagram, AmsterdamAv.theseries. We're also on Facebook, on Twitter. You can also follow our personal accounts. Um, basically, telling your friends about the show is really helpful for us, spreading the word. Yeah. Yeah, because for us, we want we want this to go as far as it can. And um, you know, if you feel that you like the show and there are other friends that you think might relate to it, sending it to them. It's as simple as that. Like that will help us so much. Mm -hmm. And in terms of supporting other female filmmakers. I think um, depending on your industry, but if you especially are in film, just making it a priority to fill some of those spots and especially some of the key roles like cinematographer, director, writers, producers with women. Mm -hmm. so we've seen that people typically look to their own community when they're filling their crews. It's not just a conscious decision. We don't want women on our crew. It's never something quite so, it's not often something like that. So it's more, I know these people, they're the people I always work with. So the important thing is injecting more people that you are going to eventually work with often who are also women. And so that takes some branching out and some searching and a little more research and a little more effort. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really important and it's definitely possible because they're there. The women are definitely there. They're there. And the beautiful thing is by doing that is that women also will call each other up more for, our, for jobs they know about. Um, that we've seen that with our crews that they now work together on other productions. They take each other on board. So that I think is very powerful because that means that we can all lift each other up. Right. Absolutely. And the show will be released one episode a week starting November, correct? Yes, November 7th. 
we'll so first. so we can all follow it subscribe it and i'm definitely looking for more to find out uh, um what happens to to those two lovely ladies <laughs> <laughs> a lot there's a lot to tell. so much yes. and my question to you is let's say someone big is watching this possibly uh, when i say big someone with the potential to give you the next step what would you like to say to them about this project Hi, Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> we would love to be in a Netflix original series. Yes, with your international reach that you have, we think this would be a really good fit. And the vibe and the feeling of the show, we think would fit well in the roster of shows Netflix has. Yes. So if Call we had to up. say one thing, we can say more, but that's the first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I definitely enjoy watching the first two episodes um, and is there anything else that I didn't ask you that you would like to add or say? Or you, any words, final words, as we say. <laughs> um, well, like Maya and Kieran, don't be afraid to break societal expectations that are yes. placed on you. Don't be afraid to go against the norm. Yeah. Do something different than your friends and family expect. Mm -hmm. And um, to stand out. Stand out, it's okay. It's actually really cool. Yeah, and people will notice. And I love Amsterdam. I've been there. Just wanted to say that. So go see Amsterdam as well. <laughs> yeah, go to Amsterdam. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.